My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from... That was uh, 10 years ago. Seems uh, incredible to think that 10 years have passed since shock and awe kicked off the Iraq war. You know, I was a... I was an anchor over at the Fox News Channel working the overnights uh, with Lori Dew and I. We were sharing anchor duties in the overnight. And uh, uh, it, when it was nighttime here, overnight here, it was morning in Iraq. And each and every morning, the highlight of our coverage was when a guy named Rick Leventhal woke up <laughs> from sleeping on the desert floor and get, did his first live shot of the day. He was embedded with the 1st Division 3rd Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion. And he was there on the ground, reporting live in this made-for-TV war. He joins us now on the phone line. Rick, how are you, my friend? Good morning. It feels like uh, 10 years ago today, uh, waking up and talking to you, Brian. <laughs> getting up early. I'm making you get up early. Well, I appreciate <laughs> it. I, but I, I, I always smiled because we literally would see you. You would just, like, roll out of your sleeping bag, and then, like, a minute later, Without coffee, without anything, we were making you talk on live TV. But what an experience it must have been to be on the ground and witness that. Tell us what it was like. Well, it was the most exhausting and physically demanding and challenging assignment I've had in my 25-year reporting career. I mean, it was it was ridiculous at times. Uh, it was also exhilarating and so amazing for us to be with the men who were doing the fighting. When they told us about the embed program, I volunteered right away, but I never really believed what they told us, that, we'd, that we would be with the troops doing the fight and that we'd be right up you know, front living with them and seeing what they saw. You know, it's just hard to, to wrap your head around that you'll be in more. But when we got there, it, it, that was just the case. We were in the back of a light armored vehicle, an LAV-25, with the Marines from the 3rd LAR. We rode the border with them for 60 hours patrolling back and forth and then when the war started we were right into Baghdad with them and their unit and we're there when they started firing we would be sitting right in the back of the vehicle as the chain gun opened up or the machine guns opened up and we saw the results of what they shot and there was no minders you know there was no one to tell us don't shoot that or don't report that we just sort of had to go by the rules of of the embed and and do our jobs. And Rick Leventhal, uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's really it, only you can bring this insight. And I wonder, after that experience, after being embedded for, what, what was it, nine weeks with the Marines as they charged up from Kuwait up to Baghdad uh, and then uh, took occupation of Baghdad, did, did you end up having a different opinion and feeling of about our military after going through that experience? And what was it? Well, I gained tremendous respect. I had already had respect for the military, but being with them and seeing how they operated it from from the top down was uh, just a, 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 a humbling experience. Uh, they were selfless. They never complained. They worked ridiculous hours in ridiculous conditions and did their job admirably. And, you know, regardless of your political stance, um, these guys did what they were tasked to do, and they did it um, like professionals. Uh -huh. And... Um, I got to tell you, you know, when we rolled through some small towns on our way up towards Baghdad, it was like a parade had arrived. You know, people were coming out in line in the streets, and these are people who probably never saw U.S. troops before, and or Americans, or certainly hadn't seen foreign tanks and and heavy armor rolling into their communities, and they welcomed us like heroes. They were so sick of Saddam and so glad that someone had finally. Um, was taking was taking steps to get rid of them. That just that's just the, the what they told us and what the, the general feeling was that these guys had come to rescue them, and it was remarkable to see it. What do you? What was the most vivid memory you have during that whole? I mean, so so well, many things were, were just going past you in real time. I'm sure it yeah. was almost difficult to absorb it all. But what is the one thing ten years later that stands out in your memory? Well, you know, there were a couple things. Brian, one was driving into a firefight. I'll never forget that. Uh, yeah, we had pushed all day, and, and, and the colonel said, we're going to go a little bit further, and we a little bit further, we went into it down a road, and there were guys waiting for us. And we, they were like whack-a-moles popping up behind dunes, shooting at us, and the whole battalion, nearly a 1,000 Marines, uh, came to a stop on this road and engaged the enemy for about an hour in a full-on firefight. And none of the Marines were hurt or killed. And a couple were wound, lightly wounded, but they killed a lot of uh, foreign fighters that that, that night. Yeah. And uh, 
And then we rolled on about another mile down the road and pulled off to go to, to rest. And I, and I looked at the guys. I was like, are you kidding me? We're stopping here? We were just in a firefight. You know what? Why are we stopping here? Shouldn't we go from further away? <laughs> There's enemy around here. <laughs> but we... Well, we just pulled off the right side of the road and, like, lay down in the dirt. Um, the other thing that struck me was the fear of the unknown, um, of being gassed. You know, there was all this concern about WMDs right. and about them having chemical weapons. And a couple times they yelled, gas, gas, gas. And we had to throw on our gas masks and you oh. know, zip up our suits and jump in the back of the vehicle and just sit there for an hour until they decided the coast was clear. And that sitting there and not knowing if you've been exposed was just the most I frightening thing of my life. Hey, Rick Levin, though, I, I vividly remember one of these interviews. I was just a consumer of media back then, and I remember one of the interviews, uh, it may have been you, uh, talking to a young Marine. It was about the second day of the march toward Baghdad, and uh, you uh, I think it was you, you asked the Marine, uh, what's your mission today? And he said, my mission is to beat the army to Baghdad. What, what, what was that? Was there a lot of talk about this friendly rivalry? Because you had the two columns. They were both sort of chasing each other up to Baghdad. Yeah, I mean, that was the goal, obviously. And I and I had a side bet with Greg Kelly, who was another reporter for right. Fox. He was with the Third ID U.S. Army about who would get there first. You know, <laughs> it's just kind of a that was kind of the goal. And in fact, the Marines I was with weren't going to Baghdad, and we kept pushing them to do it. And you know, of course, they're not going to listen to us. But <laughs> at some at some point, we switched units we, because they were headed um, further north to Tikrit, and we just switched off to the. Uh, 223 Infantry Reservists, and they went into Baghdad. But Greg Kelly won. Third ID got there first. The Army rolled in first, and uh, U.S. Marines were were right behind. Yeah. Uh, do, do you think that as, as people talk about this ten years later, they're saying, "Was it worth it?" Do you have an yeah. opinion about that? Um, do I have an opinion about it? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's 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 been so difficult and costly, and you know the reasons that they used for going in in the first place don't seem to have panned out and it just it it doesn't seem like it was worth it but you know i don't know if 10 years is too soon to make those kinds yeah, of judgments be right. because of the the way the world works and you know would would we have said that it was worth it 10 years after world war ii maybe probably but you know there there's a lot of things that are happening in the middle east that, that might not have happened if we hadn't gone in, and we don't know what would have happened if we didn't, if Saddam remained in power, if his sons remained in power, and and they took over for their dad, and who knows what was yeah. coming down the road from those guys. Well, I mean, I, they were I, public I, enemies number one before we went in. I, I well, haven't had the chance. Osama bin Laden. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on. I haven't had the chance to tell you this. I guess since all that happened, but I want you to know how much I greatly admired your bravery. I mean, you were right there in the thick of it, and it was a it was a pleasure to be sitting back here in the warmth of my studio and the relative comfort of my air conditioned studio with Lori Dew. With Lori Dew, yeah. and, 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 and <laughs> while while you were out there doing it, I mean, you you represented yourself very well there, and it was uh, it was really I think some the best work I've ever seen out of a young. Journalist. Well, that's so nice of you to say, Brian. You know, it was a, it was a, an amazing, remarkable, challenging experience, and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It definitely changed my life. Yeah. And you know, I was right with Christian Galdavini, who's a cameraman who, who still works in the D.C. area. Yeah. And uh, and he and I would look at each other sometimes in the back of the vehicle and just shake our heads. And say, what are <laughs> can we you doing can, here? can you believe we're doing <laughs> this? That's How right. do we wind up here yeah. in this crazy place. Yeah. In I the bet, middle of a war. I bet some just, of those Marines were thinking that, too. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. They did their job just as well as uh, you did. Well, thank you, Rick. It's good to, good to hear your voice, and, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks, on. Rick.